Hey, what is going on everybody? East Tactics here, coming at you with another video. And as the description says, this video is about how to achieve 100% steering for your armor vehicle. Whether you're running the V4, or you're running the V5, or you're running the EXB, it doesn't matter. The stock servo, first of all, has to go. It is massively underpowered to achieve 100% steering. There are gonna be real case scenarios while you're cutting and moving throughout grass, long grass, debris, brush, you know, loose dirt, sand, that you're gonna to wanna to have maximum steering. You're gonna notice a significant difference in your turn radius, especially after you've got a larger, heavier vehicle with bigger trench or tires, which you may or may not get to throughout your, your RC journey. But even if you're running stock tires and you're, you haven't upgraded your vehicle to like a lot heavier weight, I still highly recommend maximizing your steering just for knowing that you have the confidence getting peak performance in all situations so just to give you guys a heads up the stock servo that comes in any of the systems is well under 300 grams of torque in fact the stock servo that you get from the v4 is like 209 grams and i believe that the stock servo that comes from factory for the v5 and the exb is only like 265 grams of torque. So let me give you a little bit of context about how much torque you actually need. You have to have well over 500, and I'm gonna be confirming this in this video uh, to ultimately show exactly how much torque is needed to basically make it so that the, the servo arm is able to push this arm right here on the servo saver all the way to where this little notch is in any circumstance. And what I mean by any circumstance is, even if you're literally like holding your tires into a fixed position and you crank your steering, your servo saver should take the brunt of the movement of that arm and the arm should be able to go all the way from right here to butt up against that stop. So what happens is because your servo is not strong enough to do that, especially from stock, then you're missing out on what I would call getting to that 100% of steering that you need. Also, another crucial factor of what I mean by getting this arm all the way to here is the tightness of your servo. If your servo is from factory, you've never put any snap rings or tightened it up, then you're probably gonna be able to push it all the way from the back position all the way to the front position a lot easier because your servo saver is just quite frankly too loose. Now. You wanna have a tight enough servo saver that isn't absorbing all of your steering. You need the power to be presented to the actual tires. And so therefore, I would say either two or three snap rings need to be implemented into, and now this is the V4. The V5 and the EXB, I'm pretty sure their, their steering system is the same as the V4. And I've already heard about many people that have added snap rings into theirs, but, if you're experiencing low level of turning it because you are looking closely at your servo saver in here and it's just tweaking open, then you need to actually tighten it up. And so ultimately the tighter you get your servo saver, the more torque you're going to need to push this arm from here all the way to here. Right? So it is relative to how tight your servo saver is. So keep that in mind. Now I'm going to be going in and adding a third ring to mine. And so I'm going to be making mine even tighter. And so I expect it to um, transfer a lot more of the energy to the tires. So make sure that your servo saver isn't too loose. Anyway, I wanted to point that caveat out. So I have upgraded my servo from the stock servo to the Savix SW1012SG. And honestly, I really wish that I would have known what I'm about to share with you guys right now, back when I was in the market looking for a new servo. So upgrading your servo is one of the most common spoken of upgrades that you should do after you've bought one of your vehicles from Arma. Whether it be, again, old stuff, new stuff, whatever. But a lot of people will go out and they'll pick up like your, you know, 25, 30 grams, whatever. And most people haven't really kind of, they haven't heard that there is a higher echelon of servos that you can get and it's simple as that and the real funny thing is is you can go out and spend 75 bucks on the Savox SW you know 1210SG and really if you would have just spent another 15% 20% more money you could actually get a servo that is capable of literally doubling your torque out of the box even on 6 volts see 
six volts, 555 ounces. That is literally double that of stock. So as soon as you get up to 7.4, you're at 680, and if you can push 8.4, you can get 760. 760 ounces of torque. That means that no matter what is going on with your tires, if they're in the grass or if they're in some sort of terrain, uh, it's going to still push this arm right here all the way from point A to that butt stop right there, no matter what. And yes, your servo saver is gonna tweak open, but that's fine because that's what it's there for. So what I did was recently I dropped a video that basically showed that I was able to push this BLX 185 past the, its default kind of stonewalled voltage of six volts up to 7.4 volts by installing this, these two wires go into uh, external BEC, which now my system is actually running at 7.4 volts. You can push this up to 444 ounces of torque after you've installed the B, the external BEC. So now, after I did this, I, I created some tests to basically show the difference between, I think it was like 250 or something like that before. So the, the difference between 250-ish and 444, and it was, a, it was a nice difference, and it was an upgrade to my steering for sure. However, I noticed that my servo saver down in there was tweaking quite a bit and this arm was not getting all the way to the butt stop it was about three or four millimeters shy because the servo at 444 ounces was just not quite strong enough now i really do feel especially after upgrading my turnbuckles to these five millimeter rods putting in an exb ackerman plate in here and you know just knowing what this whole steering system is made out of I'm confident that it's capable of handling um, more torque put throughout its system. And so first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add the third snap ring, and I'm gonna show you the difference between two and three snap rings on a servo that's doing 444 ounces. However, it's not gonna change the fact that, it, that it's not able to go all the way from this point right here and butt up against the butt stop right there. It's still not going to be able to, is my guess. Now, that is why we are gonna be jumping over to the new servo, which is the Power Hobby 760 MG. So that's gonna definitely, definitely gonna put A, more power to the steering, and we're gonna find out if 680 ounces is enough to still tweak the servo saver open a bit to push this thing all the way from point A to point B. Will 680 ounces of torque do it? I don't know, but, I will tell you that I have future plans in the near future to get it to this point right here, 760 ounces at 8.4 volts. So I'm gonna time lapse through this and then we're gonna go ahead and get that third snap ring in there. And I may or may not chime in and share a few tidbits on the way, just to kind of showcase a couple of things that I've done to the vehicle. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Now real quick, those of you that are using this little modification, which I highly recommend. It's just two 16 inch zip ties. Uh, it lends a ton of support to your body right here to prevent cracking along your body up under the windowsill and the front windshield. Um, you do not have to put these on too tight, so they are pretty easy to just pop off like this. Okay. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out that you may or may not be able to see very well, but I don't want to move my camera, so I'm just going to lift up the vehicle. If you look down in here, you see that I put this nut and bolt going through to just basically provide a stop for, but for ultimately it. it does stop it from going downward, which is the main impact prevention that you want. Now there's room for you, there's room for my fan to be here without, you know, creating all kinds of just kind of pinch in this area. I'm actually thinking about increasing the length of this bolt so that it goes just to about here because I did come down pretty hard on my roof and and this section just popped underneath here but ultimately it does stop it from going downward. So, so just kind of one way to get around this so you can have this 40 millimeter fan here um so yeah keep that in mind
Okay, so it's pretty simple. All you need to do is remove these two, or actually these three, one, two, three, and then these back two right here. So there's four, five, so five bolts. And then we're gonna be removing the upper A-arms. Now, if you look closely, you can actually see that these two bolts going in have both been dremeled uh, because they stripped out. Um, this is one of those bolts that you really gotta crank in there pretty decently and you know, like all armor screws, they suck and so they strip out. I'm actually gonna check to see the length on these. I might be able to convert these over to the Torx, the same Torx screws that I bought for the motor here. I'm hoping these Torx screws will also work for this, so I'm crossing my fingers. We'll see. So the goal here is to get this thing off without having to take the turnbuckles off. I'm just trying to save the hassle and I'm hoping that I will be able to do so. All right, cool. So I was able to get it, this thing turned at a 90 degree angle, right? This right here is a 14 millimeter. All right, looks like I was able to pop it on. Now these snap rings are cool because I can actually remove this piece right here. And then bring this around to the other side like so. And then reinstall this little And so now this will squeeze the snap ring and get it back. So that it's tight. All right, so now there's three snap rings in there. So because that was such a pain to get off of here for whatever reason, I am going to put a little bit of grease So stock, it comes with these metal bushings, which you want to replace with these um, little bearings. And I'll put a note right now in for the size of this bearing in case you just want to buy it individually, but you can get it from a pack for all the bearings throughout the whole vehicle, including these ones, four of these. So you'll end up putting two down first on the bottom of the servo saver and then one here and one here. So four of these little bearings. So it's nice I was able to do this without actually removing the two turnbuckle um, rod ends at all. So that's, that's awfully convenient. Make sure that your dog bones go back in. All right, now make sure when you're putting this stuff back together that this bowed section is on this side. So you can't easily get confused and put it on backwards. You do not want that to happen. It goes like this. I'm just inserting these part way in just to get them in their place. All right, so here we're gonna go in and we're gonna use these T20 Torx, which is gonna be really nice. You do wanna use a little bit of blue Loctite here. Okay, those Torx are awesome. <laughs> they fit perfect, I love it. Okay, now we can get these through all the way. I am gonna put a touch of Loctite right there, the blue Loctite.
Now before you reattach your servo arm, you want your steering to be centered. All right. So that is how quick and easy it is to install another snap ring, or if it's your first time, all three snap rings, into your servo saver. I actually managed to do it without even removing the, uh, the turnbuckles, um, which is nice. It makes it more convenient, easier to do. Um, I'm going to do the testing now to see the difference between this servo, which is currently running 444 ounces, uh, with three snap rings as opposed to the two snap rings. I just want to keep all of this stuff you know, obviously taken apart because we're gonna be installing this bad boy in here and rerunning the test a third time. So stay tuned for that, it's uh, it's late, so I'm gonna come back and this will all be in one video, but I'm just gonna come back tomorrow and do the tests and we'll see the results. So, see you tomorrow. All right, everybody. It is time to film the difference between two snap rings and three snap rings with the 444 ounce. It's the Savox 1210 SG still. And my helper today is none other than the fantastic Ivy May East. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Are you sure that's who you are? Yes. Okay. All right, so. I slap the tires on, and also I need to hot glue a little rod to the tire. Oh, kinds of fun stuff. All right, let's do it. Okay, let's test this. Three snap rings, 7.4 volts, versus two snap rings at 7.4 volts with a Savox SW1210SG. All right, okay, concrete test. Wow. Okay. That looks like a good three or four inches better. Okay, so now let's check rug. All right. Okay, we're officially on the rug. Let's get centered on the vehicle. Okay, so just before concrete. So an improvement, and then just looking at it as a whole, that's, you know, for big tires, that's pretty good. So I would definitely say that the, the Savox SW1210SG with three snap rings is gonna accommodate your bigger tires, definitely gonna accommodate your smaller tires. Now let's take a close look at the actual bar is it touching full right no see that it's still a good you know three or four centimeters away it's not reaching all the way to its full potential where on the concrete It actually doesn't quite make it all the way. See the small gap? So it's not quite reaching even on concrete. Now when it's in the air, when it's in the air, See, no gap. While it's in the air, there's no gap. And the servo endpoint stops it from overexerting itself past that point because 
you always want to set your servo endpoints right to that spot. So obviously it gets there while it's in the air. Now let's go test it in the grass. In the grass, same gap. Not reaching there. And that's all the movement you're getting right here. My servo saver. And the servo saver still splitting open quite a bit, even with three snap rings. So the servo saver is definitely doing its job still. All right, so the verdict is with three snap rings, it's still not able to push the arm all the way to the butt stop. And therefore, you're not getting 100% steering because 444 ounces is just not strong enough when it's in a resistant type of a terrain. So now let's see what 680 ounces of torque can do in the realm of getting our arm a vehicle to 100%, which is basically, again, just getting that arm all the way to that butt stop in any situation. Doesn't matter if the servo saver tweaks or not, it should be able to get it all the way there. All right, so I'll go now and install the new servo and see what happens. All right, so check this out, guys. I've got this bad boy 100% installed right now, and I figure I'm not gonna bore you with uh, the details of installing a servo. It's pretty straightforward. There are a few things though that I, that I do wanna talk about. First and foremost, look at this thing. It is buttoned down like Fort Knox. It is absolutely not going anywhere. I mean, if you check it out right here, you see how that thing is just basically swaying back and forth every single time I exert the servo. This thing doesn't move at all now. And this is for two reasons. And actually, I highly recommend if you if you got a servo, if you pick up this servo, do this, or if you have you know any other servo combination with your actual uh, servo mount, so this right here is a voltage hobby servo mount and it actually came a touch too wide for this servo. So I reckon that everybody's gonna have a different circumstance, but the, the fact of the matter is, you're probably gonna have a servo that leaves room. And so if you look right here, you can see I've got a metal plate that I actually squeezed in there so that this thing is secure. Side to side movement, 100% gone. So. That was a, one of the first things that I want to do. And I actually just found a, uh, I was just kind of digging through my random box of miscellaneous things. And I have no clue where this piece of metal came from, but it is really stout. Anyway, this bulge section had to get cut out. So I just took my Dremel and I cut out a hole in it and I got rid of this whole kind of beveled section. So it's just basically the flat piece. So now the actual thickness of this, and again, this is going to vary based on your situation, but find a stout piece of metal. You don't want some thin flimsy thing. It needs to be something, you know, with some toughness and squeeze it in here. Um, just like I did here to get rid of any potential side to side slop. And I guarantee you, you're going to have much better performance. So my particular piece of metal needed to be, um, this thickness right here and it just ended up working out that I found this piece to take care of it. So removing this thing was pretty straightforward. While I was kind of tinkering with um, the, the four screws that go in to mount this to the plate, I did go ahead and take advantage of a piece of sorbothane, the hard plastic and the grommets. So there's basically three layers of protection of shock absorption. Um, I ended up stripping out the, uh, where are they? I ended up stripping out these things, one of these because, you know, classic hex head stripped out, right? So because I've got a baggie of these, these M3 that I ordered, I've just been going around and I ended up using M3 all around it. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then as you know here and here, these are M4 here though. These replacement Torx heads have been a blessing. I absolutely love it when I can switch one of my screws out to one of these Torx heads. Anyway, so this thing is locked down solid. It is not going anywhere. Ultimately guys, let me give you a quick look of exactly what my steering used to be back in the day when I first got my RC. Stock servo, stock loadout. This is what the steering looked like. Then, not too long after that, I went in and I added two snap rings into the servo saver and my steering improved and it looked, you know, a little bit better. But honestly, I mean, I thought it was like, you know, the the steering that I was looking for, but nope, the steering was still not anywhere where I wanted it. And then later down the road, I ended up getting the Savox SW1210SG and I still had the two snap rings in there and it towed it a little bit more ounces. It was only 277 ounces. So not even that big of a jump. So I really had the same performance. And then after that, I jumped over to installing the external BEC and jumped my ounces all the way up from you know 277 to 444, and my steering improved and went from you know basically what you saw there to this here. And um, again, you know, thought my improvement was what I needed. Well, throwing on bigger trencher tires and learning more about steering, I realized that my steering was not 100% yet. So now, uh, going from 444 ounces to 680 ounces which surpasses the threshold of being able to maximize steering getting that getting that servo arm to go all the way from point a to point b so now let's button up the final testing and get her set up over there with the rod hot glued to my tire and let's see what kind of performance we get both in the air on the concrete on the rug and in the grass and then in future videos you'll see it performing so Let's get to it. All right, we've now officially got the new Power Hobby installed, and we are going to check it on concrete first. All right, on concrete, it goes as far as air. And it goes past, I think that's pretty much air. So basically on concrete, it does the equivalent of air. Wow. Okay, now let's check it out on the rug. All right, on the rug, it goes past concrete. Almost to the concrete, well past the rug. Yeah, we'll just take a look at it. Okay, let's take a look and see if this is going all the way. Yep, it's going all the way. If I had my flashlight handy. All. I had the flashlight in my mouth, so I couldn't say anything. So, yes, okay, so I'm gonna shut up while I'm doing it, but watch, while I'm on the rug, the servo pushes all the way to the butt stop. Not reaching there. All right, now let's go test it in the grass. All right, now you can't see anything because it's dark out, but I got a flashlight. So I have to hold the flashlight in my mouth, but I'm gonna um, test it to see if it pushes the servo arm while in grass with large tires all the way to the butt stop. All right, now let's just test the full movement in grass. Wow. 
once again, guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos. Uh, hit that like button. When you hit that like button, it kind of triggers the algorithm in YouTube. Uh, it helps it, you know, become more shared and things like that. So if you appreciate it, just hit the like button for me. It goes a long way. And if you're not a subscriber, subscribe to my channel. Check out the description. You know, if you want to pick up any of these products, use my links. It helps out a little bit and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So for those of you that are wondering why I am so diligent and so adamant about maximizing the steering on this vehicle, well, A, it's my personality. So I really want to just have the best of the best and I want to share it with you guys. But also, I want to dabble a little bit in AVC. So AVC is Active Vehicle Control. Check out what I picked up, guys. I picked up a brand new receiver, a brand new transmitter, picked up a new higher end motor, and an 8S ESC. The sucker's gonna push 8.4 volts, which is gonna even push my servo farther, maximizing everything. Now, a lot of people have sort of had a little bit of distaste for the smart tech when it comes to active vehicle control. And you know what, maybe it isn't for a basher. But there's two reasons why potentially people haven't really learned to love it. A, their steering hasn't been tweaked to be 100%. And active vehicle control 100% relies on steering. And the other thing that it relies on is being able to tweak the settings. So if you use a classic controller that you get right here, if you use this controller, which comes with the vehicle, it forces you to basically have a ton of limitations on AVC, the active vehicle control, which helps you, you know, stay straight if you're gunning it. It uses smart technology to keep the vehicle moving forward in a straight line. But this controller forces you to kind of match the control with the throttle. And a lot of people don't like how much it takes away from you as a driver because you're sort of forced to, you know, experience both of those features on one dial. However, if you buy a higher end receiver, you can actually tweak the throttle, make it go away completely, and still take advantage of the steering, which with good steering, strong steering, we may find that AVC is actually something we're gonna enjoy. So stay tuned for my future videos coming up where I install all three of these components and do an in-depth review of AVC. And if it is something that is, you know, basher friendly or if we should just do away with it all together so stay tuned for that guys like and subscribe if you haven't already and also my next video i will be giving away a mod box compilation so stay tuned for the details on that east tactics out